Wait, you actually clicked on this? Did you not see the... Le- Those are the best. Those are the best games on this system. And you actually want to see more? I don't know who's the masochist and who's the sadist, you or me, but... Fine, let's do this shit. Bomber. It's Bomberman with some of the most brain-dead AI ever. Blow your enemies! Um, no thank you. You can actually make the game even easier if you choose the two-player mode, because remember, player two can never be controlled. There isn't even a single-player mode where you go through the multiple stages and kill enemies. It's just the combat mode is some of the worst music I've ever heard in my life. Did they actually compose this music, or did they just record a marching band beating a synthesizer with a sledgehammer? Brain switch. This one's just fucking annoying. A pair of letters appear on screen on either the left monitor or the right monitor. If it matches the rule for that monitor, you say yes. Otherwise, you say no. So, since this one has an even number, you say yes. This one doesn't have a vowel, so you say no. See how many you can get right in one minute. Who gives a shit? What, is there an online community to compare your high scores in this game? Next entry. Chess. Yes, they managed to put a full version of chess on here. If you like chess, I guess it's alright. The music isn't anything spectacular, but it does get grating after a while. Color puzzle. They actually made a game based on that old Stroop Effect puzzle. Match the color of the word, not the word itself. Pass. Cross the road. Yep, it's Frogger. Believe it or not, this may actually be worse than Lobster Lib. Think about that. This company that has an officially licensed contract with Sega made a worse game than PETA. You can only move forward by pressing the buttons, never back. Every time you get a man across, you get 100 points, which makes the whole scoring system pretty stupid since you move on to the next level every time you get three across. Yawn. Dominant color. This one is just fucking pathetic. Pink and green hearts appear on screen, and you have to choose which there are more of. Unless it says reverse, in which case you choose which it has less of. And if this wasn't already the most insultingly simple puzzle game ever, they decided to add one more fuck you by constantly changing which of the colors are in which position. The time limit they give you is two minutes, and let me tell you, good fucking luck staying interested for the whole time. After about the 30 second mark, I just started randomly guessing. Fight or lose, a puzzle variant of chess. A series of pawns move down from the top of the screen, and you have to capture them before they reach the bottom. There's actually quite a bit of strategy involved, since usually there's only one possible solution. This one is passable. Firefly Glow. Sounds like a My Little Pony character. Okay, I'm starting to think this one was just ported from a freaking iPhone game. Fireflies light up in sequence, and you have to repeat the sequence with your magic wand. There's not even any music, so it even fails as a Simon clone. Flash Memory. I wish this thing had flash memory, then I could put some Simpsons episodes on here. Numbers appear, and you have to touch the stars in order from least to greatest. I hope you like listening to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, because that's all this game has to offer. Next. Formula Challenge. I swear, if this is another math quiz game, I think I'm gonna have to kill someone. Okay, then. What do you want me to say? Two formulas pop up on screen, and you have to decide whether or not they're greater than, less than, or equal to. At least they don't keep moving the symbols around, unlike some games. But who gives a shit? This isn't school. Stop trying to be math blasters or number munchers. Your fucking game system is time you started acting like it. Jewel Magic. Well, you have columns in columns three, so how about columns number two, by which I mean this game belongs in the toilet. I think they're deliberately screwing with the players at this point, because not only do you have to match the gems by color, you have to match them by shape as well. In a good game, they would make every tile visually different to prevent the player from getting confused, but here, that's actually designed as part of the game. Sure, it'll make it hard, but it doesn't make it any fun to play. Moving on... Logic Match. Ugh. I'm running out of things to say about these games. Rotate the numbers in 2x2 two two chunks in order to solve the puzzle in the limited number of moves. Again, you have way longer than any sane person would spend on this game. Match 11. Well, I hope you like Blow the Man Down, because you'll be listening to it for a while. Match any number of cards together so they add up to 11 and try to clear as many as possible before time runs out. 
You can only select the bottommost cards, so you have to work your way up the tower as more layers are added. If you can't match a card, you can use a joker to get rid of it at the cost of 10 seconds on the clock. Hey, what am I complaining about? That ends the game even faster. Mega Brain Switch. It's like regular Brain Switch, but with an extra layer added for consonants and odd numbers. Other than that, it's the exact same game. Next. Memory Match. Symbols appear and you have to remember what they were and determine whether or not the symbol in the first slot matches the symbol in the third slot. That's it. At least the music is fairly innocuous. I never thought I'd be praising the music in one of these games. Mirror Mirror. Letters appear on a 5x5 grid along with a symbol that helps determine its orientation, and you have to find the letters on the new flipped grid. This one is okay, but like most of the minigames, they feel like they'd be used as part of something larger like the hacking minigame in the original Bioshock. Mr. Balls. Insert testicles joke here. This one's okay, but still nothing to really obsess over. It's a clone of Lights Out. Select a tile to toggle all the tiles around it and try to get all the characters on screen. The music for the title screen sounds like it belongs in a totally different game, like an action platformer. I don't know, maybe I just have Kirby on my mind for some reason. Once you finish all the scripted levels, there's a random mode that gives you a randomly generated level every time, which is okay if you're into this sort of thing. It's passable. Panic Lift. I barely even had to watch the tutorial to decide this one wasn't worth it. You play an elevator operator, and I've lost you already, haven't I? You have to stop the elevator on the floor people request, except they only ever tell you their floor once, and you just have to remember it. If you screw up just one time, it's game over and it tallies your score. So your final ratio will always be your score and of one more than your score, making it pretty meaningless. Over time, it will keep adding more people, which increases the difficulty dramatically. But you don't feel accomplished when you get a high score, you feel like you're wasting your time. Reaction Match. This game is fucking retarded. It's like Memory Match, but way, way simpler. I don't know if this is intended for two-year-olds, but check this out. Trucks will appear on the screen with a symbol on it. If it's the same symbol as the truck before it, say match. Otherwise, say not match. That's it. They don't even try to mix it up with different colors. Even the tutorial doesn't even fucking try. It's nothing but a two-second loop that only shows you what to do when they match. I'm falling asleep here. Space Hunter. This one is really weird. It's split into two modes. In one mode, a spaceship appears with a number, and you have to remember where the spaceship is and find it without accidentally clicking on one of the other symbols. Then, once you find three numbers, you have to arrange them into a math problem. One, eight, seven. I'm gonna one, eight, seven this motherfucker. 19 out of 20, and I still get a perfect. Maybe it's made by the French. Sparkling Truffle, another name that sounds like a My Little Pony character. Wait a minute, this is the exact same description as Bulls and Cows. Did they seriously screw up the instructions? I, I'm not really surprised, but damn, you couldn't get someone who knew English to look through these games to make sure there weren't any glaringly obvious mistakes like this? How is it I'm putting more effort into this video than these people did making their officially licensed Sega product? As for the game itself, it's Simon. Press the directional buttons to duplicate the pattern shown by the computer, which adds one more digit each time. The different mushrooms don't make different notes, just the same generic sound effect for most of these games, which makes it really monotonous. Sudoku Quiz. Well, I hope you already know how to play Sudoku, because this game is not going to explain it to you in words. As it is, it's alright. You can't make any notes in the corner like with Brain Age, but you don't get any penalty for a wrong answer either, so you could just brute force a solution if you wanted. One weird thing is that the timer actually runs faster than it should, so the 60 seconds in game is only about 47 seconds in real time. It also seems to slow down if you move the cursor compared to when it's still, so you can't even trust the in-game time. Table Magic. It's a shell game. Find the treasure chest that has money in it after they get scrambled up. As you go on, they'll add more chests, and you'll need to keep track of more at once, which does add to the complexity. One annoying thing is that you can only press left or right to move, not up and down, forcing you to wrap around to get to the chest you want. It's passable, but not much replay value. Treasure Hunt. Didn't we just play this game? Check it out. You have a few seconds to memorize the map, then maneuver your boat to the treasure without hitting hazards. Later levels will force you to pick up keys in order first, and start hiding them as well as they get harder. At least this one is mercifully short, because I don't think I could take another loop of three blind mice. What does three blind mice have to do with this anyway? Is it because you can't see where you're navigating, so you're blind? That's really a stretch, guys. Warehouse Keeper. Remember Boxel or Sakaban? It's basically that, but with the smallest sprites ever. There's really no excuse for the levels to be this small, since they never get bigger than about 10 by 10. 
I have absolutely no idea what the different difficulty levels do, because you always have the same levels in the same order. If you get stuck, you can press the B button to restart, or, you're gonna love this, press the A button to automatically skip the level. It's just so weird to see a game that actually works on the honor system like this. It's like they know the score doesn't matter, the levels don't matter, none of this matters, so they don't even bother giving you the pretense of making them rewarding. If you like these games, go for it, there are 24 different stages, but I never really found them to be too rewarding. And I especially don't find it rewarding when I can unlock the next level just by pressing A. And finally, we get to Whack-A-Wolf, the last game on the system. I guess we play the hunter from the story of Little Red Riding Hood, but instead of a rifle, we carry around a massive fuck-off hammer like King Dedede. Whack the wolf while avoiding the little girl. Of course, I like to imagine they're John Talbane and B.B. Hood, and she can take care of herself. Play stop the music! And that does it for the at game Sega Genesis Ultimate Portable Game Player. Someone get me a Mario game. I think the most insulting thing about these games is that they actually lump them in with real games that originally came out on the Genesis. It's all over the packaging and the website, but they were never officially licensed games. These are homebrew shovelware trash from deep in the bowels of Asian and South American software development basements. It reeks of a company that just doesn't get it. Oh, look at this! We have all these games you remember from when you were a child, like Curling 2010 and Jax P. Sure, they're stupid and have shitty graphics and awful music, but that's what games were like back then, right? Yeah, we can make games just as good as the big boys. It's like your childhood never left. When this is the minimum level of quality needed for entry, it does a disservice not just to people experiencing these games for the first time, but also to fans of the originals hoping to recapture their nostalgia. It's like when you go to your grandparents' house and they have their candy dish. It's full of, like, caramels and peppermints, but they also have cough drops and loose change. Or when you find your old toy box from when you were a kid, but your toys are buried under old snow chains, Thanksgiving decorations, and grandma's ashes. Because it's all the same to them. It's all the same crap, and they think they deserve credit just for saving them this whole time. It's like they're trying to make a good impression and offer as many of these games as possible as sort of runners-up to the 40 gold standard games, but these are not 40 pieces of silver. This is just betrayal. This is TZ, and as a Nintendo kid... I'm sorry. Wow, I can't believe we are finally done. It was not easy playing through all those games, so if you enjoyed watching me suffer, be sure to hit like. If you happen to miss the first video, click on the right, or click on the left to watch my PETA games video, which contains games that are surprisingly better than the ones here. Have fun and happy gaming, everybody.